Good morning, everyone. I am a disruptor. Doesn't sound very good when you say it like that, does it? Susan said this morning she was going to inspire people. I'm going to disrupt you. But that's what I specialize in. I work with analog organizations to help them transform into the digital world to become what I call a digital native. And I'm going to start by telling you a story. And it's a story about an association. And it's a very successful association, many, many members, very proud record, um, great, great track history. And then something happened. A new kind of association came up. And they were doing very similar things. So the what, it was very similar, but the how was very different. And the way that this how manifested was that they were able to bring on new members and onboard new members very, very fast. They were able to bring in new partners and onboard new partners very, very fast. Much faster than other associations. They were able to operate in an ecosystem, whereas the other association couldn't operate in the supply chain. And then another thing happened again, artificial intelligence. The first association couldn't really use it because artificial intelligence depends on one very, very key thing. It's a new four-letter word, data. Whereas a new association had really good data, it could really use artificial intelligence. So they're doing the same thing but one association was much, much, much more successful than the other. So here's my first question for the audience today. If we are simply following the data, how, what do you think the possibility or the chance or the risk is for the first association to transform into the second? Any guesses? Percentage? Zero? Oh, that's very pessimistic. <laughs> Five to 10? It actually depends on who you ask. If you ask McKinsey, they say that about one in four can do it. That three in four are going to fail. They won't be able to make that leap. That figure is about two years old. Since then, things have sped up significantly. Now that figure is probably closer to one in six. Only one in six organizations can make this jump. And we have to ask ourselves why. And it's quite simple. And I'm going to be a little bit provocative here and say there's nothing that you actually can do nothing you can do, because it's not a doing matter, it's a thinking matter. There's nothing that we have done in the past that is fit for purpose going into the future in the digital world, because they are so radically different. All of the thinking that we used to build our existing organization, our existing association, that thinking cannot be used to build a fully digital native organization, because it is so different. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to expand a little bit about the other two speakers started talking about, which is this digital disruption. But I want to approach it a little bit differently. I actually want to t tell you and share with you how you actually do it. Go into the detail and understanding what is the exact mindset that you need in your association to become a digital native. Because once you're a digital native, you can do a lot more which much less because you get this fantastic thing, this byproduct of digital, which is possibly the most important thing, the why we do it, and that is scale. We can scale, we can do much, much more at near zero marginal cost. So in order to explore this, I'm going to have to make you a little bit uncomfortable. I'm going to have to stretch you a little bit. 
and I'm not going to be able to stretch you by telling you what you already know. So we're going to go in the other direction. And we can do that in a couple of different ways. And this is the matrix that was developed thousands and thousands of years ago in China. And it essentially states that there are things we know and there are things that we don't know. And if we combine them, we're getting a matrix. So the first cell in the matrix, we know what we know. We're not going to go there. Boring. We know there are things we don't know. And that's probably by some of you here today. So that's common sense. There are things you know that you don't know you know. That sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? But it's quite possible that you will have all these different pieces of knowledge in your mind and you haven't connected the dots. So you actually know it, you just haven't connected it. And the fourth one, and that's the most important one, we don't know what we don't know. That's our full potential. That's where most of our answers are going to be. That's the box that is really important to try to uncover in the digital age. This is the only slide that I'm going to show you, something that you already know. It's a slide that was developed a couple of years ago in Australia by Deloitte Consulting. And they try to look at the Australian marketplace and try to understand the disruption, try to quantify disruption, and get some kind of industry flavor. And they looked at disruption across two different lenses, what they call the bang and the fuse. And the bang is a degree of transformation, the fuse is when it's gonna take place. Associations are in a very disruptive space. There's no surprise here. What I find really interesting with this diagram is not who's being disrupted or not. It's really how wrong they got it. Because when they developed this chart in 2013, it came out in January 2014, they were looking at change as a constant. But it isn't constant, it's increasing. It goes faster and faster and faster. So everything that you see on the right side in this matrix in Australia has already happened. So change is increasing, it's going faster. And it's very hard to see it if you're sitting inside it. Suddenly you wake up one morning and the entire world has just moved past you. And there are a couple of drivers here that are really making disruption really problematic for, for association. Firstly, it's people intensive. If you have a lot of machinery, disruption is much, much slower. The more people you have, the lighter your balance sheet is, the faster disruption is going to be. Repetitive processes. This is ripe for, for disruption, ripe for automation. Because everything that's being repetitive can be automated. New technologies, mobile, etc. no surprises. And it's a fairly light regulation. The heavier the regulation is, the slower the change in disruption is. So we're seeing this really, really big shift. And we talked a little bit about the mindset shift. The, mind shift. the mindset shift is absolutely essential. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the things that are driving the mindset shift before we actually look at exactly what the mindset shifts are. The first one is data, and you're going to hear me talk about data over and over again for the next 25 minutes. We must master our data. In the past, concepts such as a data strategy were something that technologies, the IT manager worried about in the background. Today, the data strategy and data should sit right in the center of the organization. The data strategy is a future business strategy. You cannot use automation, you cannot use artificial intelligence unless your data is right, because artificial intelligence only works on data, nothing else, only data. So if you have a, a lot of people in your association, for example, cleaning your marketing list and deduping and all those kind of things, that is not a good sign. 
that means that artificial intelligence is not going to be very effective at all math. It will probably give you the wrong answers. The other one is the user experience. And I'm not just talking about different channels here and how we're interacting. I'm talking about the two-way communication. Every time we communicate in a digital world, there's always a response. Everything in the digital world generates data. So, of course, if I'm sending you an email and you're opening that email, I can tell that. There are technologies where I can tell how long you have been looking at it. So all of this data is coming back. If we have artificial intelligence sitting in the background and looking at this data, looking at the interaction, artificial intelligence can, can improve this interaction and making it better, more sticky, more, more engaging. But again, it's all relying on the data. And the third one is ecosystem. And this is a really important one as well. And there's a really big difference between a supply chain and an ecosystem. Would anyone like to have a go to define the difference between a supply chain and an ecosystem? It's a bit of a tricky question. In the supply chain, everything is linear. You have stages. You have to manufacture something. You have to distribute it. You have to retail it. Then you have to consume it. Very simple. Has existed now for a couple of hundred years. The ecosystem is not linear. In the ecosystem, there are no competitors, no customers, and really no partners either. There's only members that are interacting in different ways. Because a member can be a competitor, a partner, and a customer at every given time at the same time. So I've said a couple of times that the shift starts in the mind. So we're going to start digging into the mind now and see what this really means. So I'm going to start by just reference these two quotes by Einstein that I think are really, really good. The first one is, and I'm sure you've heard them before, the, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. And the second one is you cannot solve a problem with the same thinking that created the problem in the first place very important quotes, learnings, and messages for the digital world. So now we're going to talk about this mindset shift. And we're going to be really specific what it is and what you need to do. And there's three of them. And the first one is friction. This is the key word in the digital age, friction. Friction is a side effect. It's physics. It is when you're transforming one energy into another, you always create friction. That is, you lose something in the transaction. For example, you put petrol in your car. Petrol is being converted into velocity, but it's also creating friction, like heat, which is lost. So you have exactly the same issue, the same problems in a digital world. And I'm going to give you one really good example that is illustrating the shift in mindset needed. It has to do with the customer. In our analog business, if we are looking at the customer and we're looking at how the customer interacts with us and the customer process, we look at taking people out of the process in order to make it more efficient. We are trying to improve it. We are trying to digitize it. You don't do that in a digital age. How can you digitize something? It's already digital. So in the digital world, we start with a fully digital process. We have to create a future state process and make it fully digital. We have to design our process without human, human beings in it. And then what we do, we design human beings into the process. So in analog, we take human beings out of the process to make them more efficient. In the digital world, we're putting human beings into the process to make it more efficient. Again, a very different mindset. The other one is scale. 
In the analog world, we can only do one thing at the same time. Now, I know I'm not going to be politically correct here, but there is sometimes a bit of a misunderstanding that some people can multitask and others can't. Strictly speaking, no one can multitask. Because in analog age, we can only do one thing at the same time. In the digital world, there are no such limitations. You can do everything at the same time. Which puts a very, very different lens on planning and things like that. So that's a very, very important mindset shift, the scalability that comes with the digital age. And that scalability does not come from process. It comes from this four-letter word, which is data, right? Scalability comes from data. It comes from opening up the data inside the organization so you can use it and also open it up to outside of the organization, into the ecosystem, to your partners, etc., sharing it, transacting together. And you do that through something called an API. So an API is a doorway that sits on top of data and allows you to share data. The third one is a little bit counterintuitive. It is about simplicity. If I was going to rank these three, I'd say this one is the most important. Because if you don't get this one right, the two first are somewhat academic. In the analog world, everything goes really slow. Really, really, really slow. In the digital, things are spinning at light speed. So when we are designing for the analog world, we make things complex. We can, because things are going so slowly. So we're designing things that are this complex and this big. Now we step into the digital world. Remember, it's spinning insanely fast. So we take this big, complex thing that has been engineered for a world that almost stands still, and we plonk it into a world that's operating at light speed. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to break. That's, that's a digital disruption. Is it to take something analog and put it into the digital world and hoping or thinking it's going to work? But it isn't. It can't. For anything to work in the digital world, it has to, it has to be designed for the digital world. It has to be designed for scale. It has to be designed for simplicity. And it has to be designed for no friction. That's the only way it's going to work. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to park this conversation to the side. And we have to come back to it again. And now we're going to have a look at our business instead. So these are the drivers, these are the factors that are shaping the digital world. That's a mindset that we just talked about. But how will that affect our business? Have you seen this um, model before? Business model, operating model, technology model? Probably it's quite old. There's a version of this one that's called people, process, technology. It's the same one. Now what happens? is that this model is evolving. So in the past, this is how it looked like. The business model was all focused on strategy. Three-year strategy, five-year strategy. When you're building infrastructure, that's fine. In the digital world, that is pure fantasy. You just cannot do it. The other thing is process. Everything in the analog world is based on process. We have a very interesting relationship with process. We have conditioned to think process and not data. That's one reason why this data thinking, the digital thinking, it sounds so simple, but it's really hard. Depending on who you listen to, who you ask. But let's just say human beings have, have existed for 50,000 years. 50,000 years. And we have been doing something very, very different in the last 150 years. 
So 50,000 on this side, 150 on this side. And that is, we started to learn to read and write. What happens if we can't read and write? We can't create any data. So we didn't really know what data was until about 150 years ago. If we went into a blacksmith 500 years ago, we wouldn't see the apprentice sitting there reading a book or a manual about how to, how to heat um, metal. Everything happened through a process, through guidance, show and tell. There was no data. We have only had data in the last 150 years. This is new to us. That's why we struggle. This model is breaking, and it's breaking really, really quickly. And it's giving way to the digital version, and the digital version is very different. And there are a couple of key concepts here that are really changing. And the first one is, we see the transition from strategy to purpose. This is really important. Purpose is the same, is the same thing as why. Purpose is important because in the digital world where everything is changing so fast, and literally everything is changing, we have to find that thing that doesn't change the things that is most static of all. Something that we can hold on to when the storms of change are rag raging around us. That's purpose. Nothing changes least than purpose, whether it's our own personal purpose or organizational purpose. So purpose is really important internally, motivate, inspire employees, and also externally for members, customers, partners, etc. So that's the first shift. The second shift, and that's by far the hardest, from process to data. We have talked a little bit about that, and I'm, we're going to dig into that a little bit more later on. And the last one, that is your technology. Most organizations today, associations today, are running systems. And the systems, they have evolved over time. They're mutated. Every time we have a change in business model, Quite often, organizations have added another operating model, and with that operating model, they've added more systems. So we have lots of systems. Sometimes, they even talk to each other. That is not particularly good for the digital age at all. What we need in the digital age is a platform. A platform that holds a single source of truth and is purpose-built for the digital world. It's purpose-built to change. It's purpose-built for data. This is really important because agility and scalability is actually how you compete in the digital world. There is no other way to compete. In the analog world, you can create things that are really difficult to copy. You can have the best shop in the best street, in the best corner, in the best suburb. End of story, you have a competitive advantage that can't be copied because there's only one such store. In the digital world, there are an infinite amount of those stores. They can just be copied. So if we are going to be competitive in a digital world, agility is our ability to change inside our association. Scalability is how cost-effectively and quickly we can do business outside of our organization, how effectively we can connect into ecosystems, etc. So the business model. I've talked about purpose a little bit before. The second really important thing to understand about the business model, which is critical for you in your business, are your planning cycles. They have to shorten, and they have to shorten radically. There's a concept called design thinking that most of you would be familiar with. Quite often we think about design thinking in the context of customers. Design thinking applies to everything because it's built for things that go fast, so we can iterate, so we can do A-B testing. We can A-B test a strategy. Everything spins so quickly in the digital world. All our cycles have to be much, much shorter. 
our strategic cycles can't be one year, three years, and five years. They have to be shorter than that. Otherwise, we're being left behind because everything around us changes so fast. The operating model. The shift from process to data. And I'm going to give you an example. The two previous speakers that talked a little bit about it, which I thought was interesting. And I'm going to explain exactly how it works. So this is the analog world. This is a process. And we have a lot of processes. And they all work the same way. It starts here. That's always a defined starting point for a process. And the process starts executing. And it may be reading some data, it may be writing some data, and it keeps on going, and reads some more data, and writes some more data. And it's just ticking along, and it comes to an end. And that could be another process being kicked off somewhere. The problem with this is that this process is mutating over time. It gets more and more complex, and it gets more and more risky to change, to the point that organizations, they don't even contemplate changing it. So they just leave it, and they fix it, repair, fix it, repair, and it becomes less and less agile. That model does not work at all in a digital world. It breaks. Again, we have to think about it very, very differently. So instead, this is how it looks like in a digital world. Every process is small. And instead, we're using data to drive our processes. Who has heard of metadata? Hand up, metadata. All right, so that's a second four letter word, meta. Metadata is data about data. And this is, I'm saying everything is the most important. Perhaps this is really the most important. You have to have the metadata in place for your data because artificial intelligence hangs off the metadata just as much as it hangs off the data itself. So what happens with the metadata, it actually describes the data. So your process is coming into the data. The data will inform the process what to do next, such as using metadata. And depending on the metadata, different things can happen. It can kick off a new process. It can create a new process. It can stop. It can do a number of different things. The key here is that it's much, much faster to change data than it is to change a process. To give an example, I'm a consultant. I have, I'm just in the process of finishing this for a large corporate in Australia. And something that took us three to four days, small changes to our system, now we do in a matter of minutes, simply by changing the data. And the other benefits of this model is that it can, it can teach itself. It is perfect for artificial intelligence because data informs process, informs data. It becomes an ecosystem in its own right. And we have talked about innovation as well. Innovation doesn't come from the data. That comes from the process but it only comes from the process if we can throw them away. So we have the data, and we're building something on top of the data. We're doing A-B testing to see if that process works or not, and if it works, it's great. We keep it. If it doesn't work, we throw it away, and we build a new one, and we A-B test that one. That is innovation. Continuously rewriting your process and making them better and better and better. And the technology model. And there's a really big difference here. In the past, it's all about productivity, it's about cost savings, it's about efficiency, all that kind of stuff. Those are not really words in the digital world. Here, it's all about scale. Doing much, 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 much more with exactly the same amount of resources. Currently, I'm transforming a software company that is writing software for kids. We have 300 employees. We support six million children at the moment. When we have finished this transformation, on 300 employees, we're going to be able to support 100 million children. That is scale. That's why we do a digital transformation. And we are running out of time here. 
I was going to talk a little bit about vulnerability and assessments, etc. But I'm going to invite you instead to come up and talk to me in the break. So come, come and talk to me over dinner because I love talking about this kind of stuff. And there's some really cool stuff that you can do to really quickly assess your business and understand where exactly do you have most of the problems. And essentially what you do is you're combining the speed, access, and simplicity on one hand and the business model, operating model, technology model on the other. And you simply go into each of the sales and analyze and say, what are the issues in my business? What are the roadblocks? What are the things that are not working the way they should? Can we take a couple of questions? Is that okay, if there are any? Yeah, absolutely. but maybe they can come and ask you directly. Great. Thanks, Jesper. So, so the last thing is, the, f the four-letter word is what? Data. Data. Thank, you, thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> Thanks, Jesper. You can pop that over here.